everybody, Hi Vest Smiley here. The day we've all been waiting for, the day that I finally unleash the beast within of this FC07 and will make it sound like the dark side of Japan. In the second episode of the FC07 build series, we are going to put on this Black Widow full exhaust system. Episode three, we'll be putting in this DNA air filter and this uh, flash tune ECU flash kit. Today's video on the exhaust is going to be super inclusive. It's going to tell you everything you need to know. I've had this exhaust system for, I'm going to say six months. I'm going to put it on the screen here after I fact check myself. And I have not opened this box just because I want this unboxing to be fresh for you. With that being said, let's not wait any longer. Let's unbox this thing. All right, so let's get this bad boy open. Ooh, I'm so excited for this. Papers. Paste. Ooh, shiny bits. This must be the collector hickey. Here's the two header hickey things. I'm just being stupid. No, this is the collector. Coolio. And then, the muff. Decently looking quality clamp. Hardware. More hardware. Ah, styrofoam. I was hoping I was going to be able to get away with not having to deal with styrofoam. Look, I guess in Britain where this thing's from, y'all styrofoam has hair. That's weird, bro. You Brits, I love ya. You make a quality exhaust system at an affordable price, and he talks so bloody good, I love it. <laughs> Sweet little bag. It'll never be in again. Ba bam <laughs> I want to note this now, while I've got the opportunity to do so. If you ever wondering how to remove the baffle, it seems to be a screw in here, which has this nice little cosmetic plug to go over it, which has even got Black Widow on it. Oh, they think of everything, don't they? Okay, let's lay this out and make sure it looks to be the right thing. While I'm unwrapping this, I want something to be clear. Absolutely none of this has been sponsored in any way for this video. Looks to be right. Once I get this, the stock exhaust removed, we'll lay them side to side. And I apologize for the camera angles not being the greatest. I am kind of limited for space here in my dad's shop, so I'll just do the best I can. So the first thing we're going to do is disconnect the O2 sensor. Here's the first pro tip, the tip that's going to keep you from messing something up that'll make it more like a professional install. So I can throw an open end wrench, the open end of a combination wrench right here and undo this oxygen sensor if I want it to. But you do not need to do that without disconnecting it from wherever it connects to the bike's harness. I'm gonna take a five millimeter Allen and take this shield loose. Reason we do not need to do that is it looks like a four wire O2 sensor, meaning it has literally four wires coming out of the sensor going into the connect. The issue you run into when you just twist the piss out of them and leave them fixed up here at the top, wherever they hook up to, you run the risk of either twisting up the wires inside the protective sheath that they're in, or you could go past that and actually cause them to break. And then, of course, guess what? You've got to buy an O2 sensor now. You take them two Allen bolts out, pulls right off. On the FC07, it's super easy to get this connector. I have to look at how it comes off. I'm not familiar with Yamaha connectors. Okay, I'm an idiot. There's a little tab here you just gotta pull up and then pull the O2 sensor away from it. 17 millimeter for the oxygen sensor. Combination wrench using a closed end, best thing for it. When you take loose an oxygen sensor, this thing's gotta turn like 10 rounds or so, or however many, and you're just binding this thing up. It's not a good idea. In all reality, if I would just shut up and do it, it would have took me two minutes. We're gonna take this whole rear brake pedal assembly and peg and kind of move it out of the way. And after that, it's just nuts and bolts of the exhaust and we're done. All right, now we're up to a six millimeter Allen to take loose these two bolts here, which hold on this whole assembly. I'm gonna break them loose. Zip tying that out of the way, rag covering it. Everything's good. We're gonna stick these bolts back in here just so I don't knock them in the floor. Now here's the setup that I'm using. I've got a deep well 12 millimeter, which will take loose the collector nuts here, a swivel, a universal, and then a six inch extension. You don't have to have $600 worth of tools to do this job. You can do it with just your simple Harbor Freight stuff or hell Walmart tools for that matter. And everything on this bike will be lefty loosey ratty patty. We'll bust all these loose at the same time. After we loosen them, I'm going to take everything but the swivel, put right here, take this bolt out, again, 12 millimeter. And the other side is the exact same thing, but the chain and a few other different things are directly in the way. So I'm going to use a swivel and get over there and get to it. It's the same thing. Take my word for it. I'm not going to film that side. You know what? I bet this exhaust is going to fall when I take that bolt out on this side. I'm going to stick the bolt back in on this side and just barely start it. 
that I can kind of control when and how this thing comes down. And I need to get the new exhaust out of the way, of course. I'm going to clear up the area of all my new stuff I don't want banged up, and then we're going to drop this exhaust system here. Going to knock these all off, which I can literally reach up there with my finger and undo. Then, we're all free here. Only thing holding us, I'm going to keep a hand underneath it. Is that one bolt wasn't the most graceful thing in the world, but God Almighty, and that God Almighty is because this thing is unbelievably heavy. Look at this thing. Look, that's unbelievable. If you're wanting to reuse your exhaust gaskets, which are $16, I don't know why you would. Right here is when you need to check where they're at, keep track of them. They're just these little copper washers here in, in all reality. One of them fell out when I took the exhaust pipe loose. One of them's still in the cylinder head here. And it just pulls right out. Literally that easy. All right, this is a pretty rough look at the size difference between the two and a really bad angle to do it, but look at that. You can imagine that's gonna be some weight savings. Just after a quick glance at the manual, I can see that we're going to have to move this bracket, which is what held the exhaust on, just down two places here. Yes, 10 millimeter. I'm going to use that same ratchet. Okay, we move that and then we install this little bracket. Okay, I'm a complete idiot. Once you take the two bolts out of this, you put this part away. This bracket here goes in in its place. The bolts can only go in one way. Okay, these instructions aren't the greatest, I'll say. I'll knock them for that. You can waste a second kind of trying to figure it out. So here's a view of the final product. Bracket put on in place of this little thing here. So from here, I suppose that we will Start from the headers and work our way back, putting this exhaust system on. The instructions kind of leave you hanging after this part right here. They do say just put everything together. All right, I'm just using my common sense here. This has got the tang up here for the spring and these two tangs here. And I think I've got it backwards. This one pipe here has got a one sticker. And this collector here has got a two sticker here. And that's the only things that I've got to identify. Just trying to test fit it and see how it works. This kind of stuff suck. I'm wasting time. Trying to figure out how this goes instead of being probably almost done by now. Okay, that looks pretty close there, about like that. This exhaust is certainly, installation's got its shortcomings. Time for the gaskets to go in. I'm going to install them into the cylinder head itself. What I ended up doing, put the collector on the two pipes and I used a little bit of normal wheel bearing grease up in there to hold the gaskets in long enough for me to put the pipes in there. Got it in here and then I slit this pipe on, slit the muffler on. This took some finagling, this little clamp around the muffler took a terrible amount of finagling to get right. I finally got it bolted up somewhat to the bracket that we installed earlier. I'm pushing down on it to try to get enough clearance between the can and the swing arm. Yeah, not necessarily ecstatic about the way this is going. Uh, I'm afraid that this is gonna leak and I'm gonna end up having to do this crap all over again. And that's gonna really suck. I'm not gonna be happy about that. It's just the price you pay to, to test something out, you know? The ECU flash is what I thought was gonna be the difficult part. Little did I know. Or maybe I'm still in for it. Shoo! I hope this thing is done. We've just tightened it from back to front. What I had to do was start here at the back, push down on the can itself to get the clearance between the swing arm I needed and tighten it from the rearmost attaching point and then work my way to the front. I had to tighten the flanges here at the engine last. That's the only way that I could get this thing to keep from, to, to fit correctly, to be honest with you. I'm gonna leave the rear brake assembly the way it is right now for our first crank up and leak test. But before we do that, here's one of the things that can ruin your exhaust is like my hands right now, they've got my handprints and the oil from my skin all over this thing. And if you crank it up and it gets remotely hot, then it'll do happen in just a minute. It'll actually cook the oil off your skin onto the exhaust. The exhaust ages and goes through its heat cycles. It'll heat cycle differently than what just the bare metal would and you'll have pla places where it's discolored all over it and it's just not gonna look good. So you do need to have some kind of rubbing alcohol, rub the entire thing down, get it nice and squeaky clean. Then it's time to crank it up and stick your hand around it and check for leaks. I hope when this thing barks to life, it sounds so good it makes me forget how freaking ill I am about how this whole thing fit. It's just really kind of bummed me out. So I'm gonna get some alcohol, rub this thing down, and then we're gonna be doing our first start. And it may be an orgasm, it may make me throw stuff. Who freaking knows at this point? I'm honestly, that kind of disgusted about how this has went. <sighs> Was it all worth it? So I've 
got leaks at both the places where it's clamped. No leaks around the collector where it's just press fit together and no leaks around the headers as far as I know. I'm gonna try to tighten these clamps right here up a little more. If that don't work, I'm gonna have to tear it apart later and put some dadgum glue on it. Yeah, that's as tight as they need to be. What it is, it just don't fit good. I ride this thing for the first time, I'm gonna be over this ill mood I'm in. So all I have left to do now, I'm gonna put the rear brake assembly on and for you guys in this video, we're gonna to go to some sound clips. In reality, I'm going to put the air filter and ECU flash kit in. In the comment section below, tell me how you thought that sounded. Is that worth all of the hassle? I sure hope so. Tell me anything you want to see, any questions you have, anything that you think I need to do next to the bike. Even if you tell me I'm a goober, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to probably agree with you at this point. If I don't see in the comment section of this video, hope to see you on the next ones. This is Howdy Smiley, out. <laughs>